Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm Laura Schomburg, Marketing Director at the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau. For many years, Western Kentucky barbecue has been a flavorful, celebrated tradition. And the Barbecue on the River Festival, which celebrates this tradition, has become quite a tradition in itself. Today, we have David Boggs, Executive Direc Director of the festival, here with us to talk about the 20th anniversary this year. Thank you for joining us, David. Thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. Great. First of all, just tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Barbecue on the River. Um, I got involved probably about 15 years ago. Susie Coiner and Roe Moore started Barbecue 20 years ago. Um, and Susie's family had a business there in the mall and I, she and I worked together and I just kind of started volunteering in, that, in any capacity they needed. Um, and then that rolled over into the director's job about 10 years ago. Wonderful. Well, we are certainly proud of this festival here in Paducah and there's so much to talk about with the journey of the past 20 years. But I guess just to get us started, what is the mission of this festival? The mission's real simple. It's three, it's three simple points. It's to draw the biggest crowd into downtown Paducah, to serve the best barbecue in the country, and to raise the most money for charity. Wonderful. Simple. Right, very simple. If, <laughs> if it doesn't talk about those three things, we, we don't focus on that. You know, that's our, that's our main focus. That's wonderful. And you all created a great infographic this year. Right. The Smoke and Fun Facts. Right. That really talks about how this festival has grown since 1995 when it started. Right, it's unbelievable, you know, the journey that that festival has taken yes. and the hard work that, that many people have put in over that, you know, over the years of the festival. What are some of those facts, just off the top of your um, head? Roughly, you know, the first year, I think we had 12 barbecue contestants, if I'm not mistaken, I don't mm -hmm. have that sheet in front of me, but I think there were 12 barbecue mm -hmm. contestants. This year we have 35 barbecue contestants, 36, I'm sorry, we just added one not Great. too long ago. Um, 36 barbecue contestants. We started with probably the same number of food vendors, mm -hmm. you know, selling the, the funnel cakes and right. the ribbon fries and that sort of thing. This, this year we've got 35 of those folks selling, you know, there's, there's not a fair food out there that you probably can't find at Barbecue on the River. So it's just, you can get great barbecue and great yummy side items to go with that. Absolutely. I, you know, we always say eating for charity. Yes. You can justify all the right. calories that weekend. That's awesome. Well, certainly with all that growth and all those years, there must be some good memories for you. Um, you know, there are. It's just, it's just overwhelming, you know, and an honor to be able to, to be a part of an organization that, that can impact helping raise that much money you know for charity one of the things that people do not realize is we do not handle that money that money is, mm -hmm. is handled within each individual organization um, but to, just to be able to facilitate that is just an honor I remember one year um, probably five or six years ago I was we had just given the um, given the awards out and we were coming back through the crowd and it was the first time I'd really ever kind of fought the crowd so to speak to get back to the judging tent and I just looked up and saw the masses of people and realized the impact that that was on the community. You yes. know, and, and I teared up and I got back to the judge's tent and tears were streaming down my face and somebody, you know, people immediately thought things were, were wrong. And, but I think that's one of the coolest memories and there's fun mm -hmm. stuff, you know. Um, I'm sure the barbecuers have much better stories and exciting stories to tell <laughs> than I do. But you know, it's just the fun family environment. You know, those people become a family and I think right. that's the greatest memory that I've got, you know, especially not being from the area, I've got a extended family of hundreds of people that are down there working for the same mission those three days. Right. It really does bring people together and that the moment when the awards are given out, right. I've been present for that and it does just give you chills and bring tears to your eyes when you see these people so um, excitedly right. representing these charities and raising so much money. Right. Um, it really is, it's a wonderful thing. And that is such a unique aspect of this festival, um, and it does raise right. money. Um, most barbecue competitions um, benefit one organization, mm -hmm. the organization that puts it on, um, whether it's a private business or whether it's a not-for-profit. Um, but our festival benefits over 75 different organizations, um, and we feed the public. That's another unique yes. aspect of our festival. Most barbecue competitions um, 
you, a lot of them do not allow you to feed the public. There's some now that are giving that an option to the competitors mm -hmm. or contestants, but we require you to compete and feed the public both. Um, last year we raised over $438,000 wow. for 75 different charities, or we facilitated that. You know, we, mm -hmm. That's how much they reported back to us that they raised for their charity. And in the process, we consumed over 90,000 pounds of pork and chicken. So, wow. you know, those are, those are some unbelievable numbers that are taking place in three days in downtown Paducah. Right, it, it brings so many people out. It really does achieve the mission right. of the festival. And I know that we, we have some visitors come into mm -hmm. our office and they say, you can actually taste this stuff? Right. And you really can. I mean, you can get such a feel for the different um, the different ways that people cook it and right. the sauces. Right. Um, I think, you know, Western Kentucky barbecue. We hear about these barbecue traditions. What does it mean? Um, I've kind of used the, I've looked at it this way is, I'm from South Carolina, so when you go to South Carolina, you think of a sweet mustard sauce, really, you know, your barbecue's <laughs> really wet, and you, know, you need a whole roll of paper towels to eat the sandwich. <laughs> um, so you've got your sweet mustard sauce that's South Carolina, you've got vinegar that's mm -hmm. North Carolina. Um, Western Kentucky, it's about how the barbecue is cooked. It's low and slow, or low, slow heat, takes a long time. And really, when you get a barbecue sandwich, it's, there's nothing on it. And all the sauces are different. You know, every you can go to every barbecue contestant down there, most of which are from the West Kentucky area. Each sauce is gonna have a totally different flavor, which I think is unique yeah. to West Kentucky as well. You can't taste a sauce and say, hmm, that's West Kentucky. Yeah. You know, but it's definitely how the product is cooked. Very, very cool. Um, I think that the barbecuers obviously, um, with creating these flavors and, right. and meats, they, they're essential to the festival. They, these, fo these folks have really grown over time too. Mm -hmm. You know, I know um, when, even when I first started, I was not in town, even living here for the first barbecue, but even in the first few that I was here, mm -hmm. th where barbecue is held in downtown Paducah, um, the parking lot was not even a parking lot then, it was just a gravel, old concrete plant is what used to be there. Um, and so the barbecuers would actually build a pit with concrete blocks and put grates over it and that was their pits. And they really grew and took passion in their craft mm -hmm. because that's what it is. I mean, it's truly a craft yes. and an art form. Um, that they grew their own little small businesses out of that. And now they've invested money in having their sauce bottled. I mean, we've got a few samples here on yes. the front table. Um, they invest, invest money in smokers, mm -hmm. you know, um, thousands of dollars they're investing in you know automatic smokers and we've gone from what's called stick burners which mm -hmm. is using hickory to now some of the barbecuers use pellet smokers and you know it's just really been interesting and and gratifying to see those folks grow and little did Roe and Susie know 20 years ago that the barbecue on the river would become a small business incubator and that's essentially what it's done right you know, I mean, we've got several folks that have grown, their, their product was so good mm -hmm. that, you know, relatives started saying, can you cater our family reunion? Can right. you cater my, you know, my daughter's wedding? You know, to where we've got several legitimate small businesses mm -hmm. that started because of barbecue on the river. Yes, I love that you mentioned the sauces that you brought today, barbecue and more. Right. Um, downtown celebrates this all year. Right, we and do. That's one. Of, that was the mission when we opened the store about mm -hmm. three or four years ago. Was we wanted to, you know, barbecue on the river is three days, mm -hmm. four if you count pork stock, which is a, a kickoff party the night before. But you know, we're so proud of what these folks put into barbecue on the river. We wanted to celebrate it 365 days a year. We knew that some of the barbecuers had created their sauce, had it professionally bottled. Um, they wanted an outlet to sell that sauce, to be proud of that right. sauce, and thus BBQ and More was born about three and a half years ago. Yeah, I love that you can go in and do a little sauce tasting. You can, you can. We've got a, we've got all of our competitor sauce always up for sampling. We used to have about three or four more uh -huh. that you can come in there and taste it. You know, we've got pretzels and really find your favorite one. Yeah. You know, certainly can't do that in the grocery store. Right. So. <laughs> it's a nice little experience. Yes. Um, well, obviously these guys are serious about it. Right. Um, what, what is the timeline for a participant? Um, you know, it's really year round. You know, it, it, as large as the festival has grown, as soon as the, the festival this year, we haven't even given the dates, this year the festival is September 25th, yes. 26th, and 27th. Um, probably sometime the week after that, 
they're going to debrief with their team, whether it's their church volunteer base or whether it's an actual barbecue team. They're going to debrief and say, what did we do wrong? What can we improve on next year? You know, what do you think we can do better? Um, so it really is a year-round process. And I have people that will call me maybe this week and say, I want a booth at Barbecue on the River. And if they've just started thinking about competing this week, they aren't ready to <laughs> compete at Barbecue on the River. And a lot of them do not realize, especially a lot of the barbecue teams that work the circuit, do not realize that we have to feed the public. You know, mm -hmm. they're just, in their mind, they go in there and spend, you know, they would spend Friday night preparing their product for judging on Saturday. Right. They don't realize that you have to feed people Thursday night, all day Friday, and all day Saturday. So it's just, it's it's not that we don't want them here. It's not that they don't want to mm -hmm. come. It's just they aren't prepared for the way our festival is laid out and, and managed. Right, and you mentioned those that work the circuit. Right. What does that mean? Um, we have two different categories in our barbecue on the river. There's the backyard competitor and there's a circuit competitor. The backyard competitor is just a person, it may be a church, mm -hmm. that all they do is cook at barbecue on the river or maybe cook a couple of church picnics a year. They aren't in it to make money except during barbecue mm -hmm. on the river when they're raising money for their charity. Um, the circuit cookers are the folks, they may be a restaurant that serves barbecue year round that wants to participate in barbecue on the river. They may, may be a barbecue team that, that travels the barbecue competition circuit competing in many festivals or contests throughout the year. That's a circuit cooker or, or also a barbecuer. We've had some that have had to cross over from backyard into right. circuit because they did become a caterer and started doing it right. on a somewhat regular basis. So that's kind of the difference in the two. Very good. I know we see one of the smoke and fun facts right. is the number of categories and number of judges right. that it takes to put on this festival. Um, the first barbecue on the river, there were four categories mm -hmm. to be judged in. There was chicken, shoulder, ribs, and whole hog. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that first, and there were the two different divisions that year too. But I, I believe that year, one set of judges judged all that product. Wow. Um, so that would have been probably five to ten maybe people were uh -huh. judging that first year. Um, now we've got the four main competitions. We've got six um, in six anything but categories, mm -hmm. which just kind of gives the barbecue contestants and the participants a little more fun things to participate yeah. in. Then we have the um, in your backyard competition, which you kind of yes. cook it at home and bring it down to be judged. So there's probably 12 to 15 different categories and it takes well over 150 judges wow. and auditors to judge all of that product. So that, that's a huge growth potential right yes. there too. And what a fun job to be a judge at yes. Barbecue on the yes, River. Yes, we get calls <laughs> all the time about that. So. I let, I, the past couple of years, I've been involved in the People's Choice right. Awards competition, and this is a way that you know we, as visitors to the festival, right. can try our try right. our hand and taste buds to being a judge. Right. So it's, it, that's just a fun competition. Yeah. You know, you and I were talking about that earlier, and it's just it's a fun way again for the barbecuers, and not just the barbecuers, but the food vendors as well, right. because they're open up to some of those things as well. Um, it's just a fun way for them to get involved in the competition aspect too. You know, I think they had some fun things like best looking crew yes. and you know, <laughs> the best barbecue ribs, the best chicken, the best pulled pork, but then some fun things like the best team spirit right. and, and that sort of thing. It's just a fun way for the the participants to encourage the visitors to get involved as well. Exactly, and the boards that right. kind of show the, the leaders. The tote boards, it's always fun to, yes. to see people stand around waiting for that change. Right. And whether you're looking for the best looking right. crew or <laughs> the best ribs, you can find it. Right. Um, so that is really cool. And you also mentioned another way that people can get involved, the In Your Backyard right. competition. Um, that We started that last year. It's just a fun way, you know, um, there's a lot of, barbecuing is so hot right now, mm -hmm. one of the hot you know trends a across the country. Um, but there's folks that just don't have the time to take off right. the whole week that it's going to take to do barbecue on the river. They don't have the equipment to do barbecue on the river, but they're just as passionate about the product they put out as the folks that are down there at barbecue on the river. So we started last year an In Your Backyard competition. Mm -hmm. um, you can cook the product at home. I believe we're doing ribs and butts, pork mm -hmm. butts, I think it's what's being cooked. Um, just cook it at home, bring it down to Barbecue on the River on Thursday, I believe. 
um, and it'll be judged by our judges and we'll announce those winners later in the, later in the day. Um, that information can be found on the Barbecue on the River website, bbqontheriver.org, and it's under stuff you need to know. Very so. good, very good. What a cool way to get other people involved right. in, in this. And I love that you mentioned um, how this barbecuing is really an art. Um, many of our viewers know that Paducah was named a UNESCO Creative mm -hmm. City last November. Right. and. Gastronomy is actually right. a category in this network. And although we were nominated in right. City of Crafts and Folk Art, this is this speaks to that culture here that does encourage people to get creative right. and, and you know, that can be in food. We went to a conference several years ago. It was a barbecue conference. Who mm -hmm. knew that there was a conference devoted to right. barbecue, <laughs> but we found that several years ago. Um, and, and at that conference, someone spoke and they said, you know, barbecue is becoming the new NASCAR. You know, and, and I, at first, I thought that was a little bit of crazy statistics, but as I immerse myself more into the culture, I see that. I mean, people are really, they're investing money into their team, yes. they're invest, investing time um, to hone their craft, just mm -hmm. like a, a race car or any athlete mm -hmm. practices nonstop. These folks are constantly practicing, which is a fun thing to practice in, because you know there's going to be leftovers yes. that if you're friends <laughs> with those folks, you get to sample. But it really is that, that kind of same mentality. They really it's not just let's go out there and put some ribs on the grill Friday for a competition on Saturday. I mean, they've really thought the right. process out. Right, and like you said, it is a very year-round um, hobby right. um, and art. My uncle is a barbecuer, and so year-round okay. we get to sample right. different meats and different, you know, styling. So it, it is a There's probably a barbecue competition somewhere within driving distance mm -hmm. of anywhere you are every weekend out of the year. Yeah, that's amazing. That really is. Um, let's talk about, you know, we've talked a lot about the barbecue, mm -hmm. but you've mentioned the other foods and some of the other things going on. There, it's not just about the barbecue. Right. Um, there's great live entertainment and some special events. Right. We've got great local live entertainment. I, I think Paducah should be proud of the, the, the quality of entertainment and local musicians we have in, in the area, and we really do like to highlight those mm -hmm. during the festival. Most of our entertainment is local. Um, the full entertainment lineup can be found again at bbqontheriver.org. Um, some of, we've, we've added a second stage this year. It's mm -hmm. going to kind of be more of an acoustic stage because we have added a second beer garden. So that'll be an opportunity to, to, to take some little quieter music in. Yeah. You know, sometimes the, the main stage may get a little too loud for some folks. You know, stroll down towards the farmer's market, find that, that nice little acoustic music and listen to that. We've got some fun things for the kids this year. Mm -hmm. um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are, are gonna make several appearances at the festival this year. Um, Thursday and Friday, I believe they're gonna be there from four to seven um, at the corner of Second and Broadway. They're doing that in cooperation with Wang's Martial Arts. Um, there'll be a, a martial arts demonstration. The four Ninja Turtles will be there to take photos with, with kids as well. Then on Saturday, they'll be doing the same thing, and it's three different times on Saturdays. Um, I'm gonna quote the time, but check out the website again yeah. to, to double check on that. I believe it's 10 to 12, one to three, and five to, or four to six, I believe, mm -hmm. is the times on Saturday. So there's plenty of time to get out there and, and have your photos made with those Ninja Turtles. And you know they're making a huge comeback. They were big when I was a kid, right. you know, <laughs> and, and here they are again. So I, it's gonna be fun for the kids. Absolutely, and you mentioned the second stage um, in Beer Garden, right. and that is the Schlafly. Schlafly's beer, you know, we're, we're lucky to have in the, the main beer garden um, is Budweiser products mm -hmm. in that line. Um, Schlafly's, the more crafted beer, is gonna be in the second beer garden and that's going to be down near the farmer's market area somewhere. Yeah. Just look for the signage for that. I think that'll be a nice addition yes. at that area. Kind of a little more low-key. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have that option as well. Um, there is the pork stock kickoff right. um, that is actually not, not part of the festival, right. but kicks off the event it every year. It kicks off the event. Um, this year, the Barbecue on the River is a patriotic theme across the board. Mm -hmm. Being our 20th anniversary, we kind of did some research and, and realized that this is also the 200th anniversary of the Star Spangled Banner. So we thought, you know, there's a bunch of twos and right. some zeros in there, so we'll kind of roll that in together. <laughs> I mean, we carried that over to Pork Stock, and Pork Stock is a kickoff event to Barbecue on the River. It's a ticketed event. Tickets start at $10, they're $10, $25, and then $50. The way we like to sell the $50 tickets is a table of 10 for $500, but we can certainly break some of those tickets up. 
it's just a fun way to experience the festival. You smell this, all the smoke wafting mm -hmm. through the air. Um, we've got live entertainments. I believe it's Soul Dog and Mer Vegas All Stars mm -hmm. are playing that night, which both are, yes, are great um, entertaining bands. You get a great barbecue meal. Mm -hmm. You get some great um, party favors, and it's just a lot of fun. I know you've been yes. a couple of years at least, and it's just a lot of fun to experience the festival without mm -hmm. maybe fighting the crowds yes. of the of the other three or four days. And I don't want that to be a negative thing. That's one of our missions, to yeah. draw the biggest crowd. But some folks just don't like the crowds. Right. So it's a great way to, to come down and enjoy that. And um, it, it's a fundraiser for the festival to mm -hmm. allow us to, to do year-round operations and, and not put additional cost onto the participants because if we do that then that's kind of defeating one of our missions right. is raising the most money for charity so right. that that's the goal of pork stock i think it's so wonderful even if you're planning to come to the festival right. which you should um pork stock is such a great way to kind of Really, you get a behind-the-scenes look. Do, All do. the teams are out there preparing, and and, and you can wander around, and, and you you can. We don't guarantee that food will be available mm -hmm. if you come down just to look and see what's going on. But there are some vendors that do start selling on Wednesday night, right. but um, that's their choice. It's not a requirement. You won't, may or may not find anything, but we do encourage folks to come down there. Call us 270-534-5951 um, mm -hmm. to get information about tickets for pork stock. I'd be more than happy to, to set folks up with that. Wonderful. Well, like you said, bar BBQ on the river .org. Yes. Um, check out the website. Yes. See the entertainment lineup, all of these things that are going on, all the teams that are cooking. Um, you can see how many check marks you're going to have to make yeah. at the festival, how many things you'll have to try. Um, it, we're excited September 25th through the 27th. Right. Um, I wanted to, there's actually, you know, we talk about this barbecue mm -hmm. tradition, and there actually is a whole book on Kentucky barbecue, the Kentucky barbecue book by Wes Berry. And he visited Paducah mm -hmm. and visited with you all, and he has a great quote that I'll leave you all with today about barbecue on the river. He says, on the last weekend in September, Thursday through Saturday, Paducah hosts the Barbecue on the River Festival, a barbecue tournament and pig out that raises money for local charities. The streets of downtown are filled with wood smoke carrying the sweet aromas of 60 tons of slow cooked chicken and pork. I recommend going to the festival hungry because you'll be tempted with more treats than you can reasonably taste in a weekend. Paducah's River Fest ranks highly on my list of barbecue must-dos. And it certainly ranks on our list of yes. Paducah must-dos. So be sure to join us, and thank you, David, for joining us today. Thank you for allowing us to share. And if I've got just a second, sure. it would be remiss um, if we didn't thank our sponsors. And yes. they're, again, listed on the website under sponsors. Um, this festival would not go on without the, the generous contribution of those folks as well. So we do appreciate them. Absolutely. Thank you, David. We'll see you all downtown September 25th through the 27th for the 20th ever Barbecue on the River. One, two, one, two, go.